Hi, so I'm just going to show you a quick um, overview of how we mapped the uh, UK curriculum to NOVMA for year five. Um, so particularly focusing on space and the solar system. So I'll just share my screen. So in year five, but also in year six, as we uh, just went through with the uh, previous video, then we uh, really look at this stage exploring ideas and raising different kinds of questions. That means that students um, are expected to plan different types of like, scientific um, inquiries and to really answer, qu answer questions, including um, how to control variables when necessary, but also taking measurements, um, using scientific equipment, um, but also increasing their accuracy and precision, um, and also repeating things when necessary. And also kind of recording data, looking at results, um, increasing the complexity with diagrams and labels, but also thinking about um, the test results and uh, whether those test results are fair, um, but also identifying scientific evidence and that has been used to support or refute ideas and arguments. Um, so looking at uh, year five, then there is a very exciting topic, I think, uh, which is about Earth and space, um, where students are really introduced to the idea that um, the star is at the center of our solar system and um, what is our solar system and what are the planets. And uh, for this, then we asked uh, the teacher at the Algate School what um, was particularly important for her, um, which uh, learning objectives was she going through, and um, she uh, told us that it was important that the students not only learned about the solar system, but also the properties of those planets. Uh, so we, you know, chose a couple of planets that were obviously well explored at the moment um, with Mars, and um, also to know a bit more about the phases of the moon. Uh, so that was a particular, um, you know, very customized um, book that we did uh, for one of the teachers uh, who uh, was teaching uh, year five. Um, so just looking at that, then um, we really uh, took the students who were about nine. Um, and so we wanted to help them recognize themselves as explorers. So uh, we gave them a little bit of a narrative. So you are explorers on a mission to find out about the planets in our solar system. Let's discover and explore. And um, really kind of ask if they want to go together as a group um, or partners or whether it's a solo trip and if they what they would take with them in their spaceship so talk um so you know a bit of dialogue about talking about what they would um what they would take you know imagine themselves in that kind of situation make a list um how would you sleep and think about you know what is it like without gravity um and then also to to discuss that and get them into the topic you know because it's really important to uh, get students engaged with the topic before you then enter it, you know, instead of just going into very dull, boring kind of classification. Um, so <laughs> we looked at the solar system and the different planets, and we also provided the school with uh, 3D um, planets um, so that they could explore that in a, with 3D objects, which complemented the big ideas curriculum that was the basis of uh, the scientific curriculum within the school that we worked on. And um, yeah, we asked uh, students to kind of observe a little bit, you know, which planets do they see that are larger than others? Um, and, and really to kind of think about the environment, think about the context, think about the bigger picture before they go into the smaller picture. Um, so that's uh, at the beginning. And then, <clears throat> so this was um, on your first voyage into the solar system, you spot a red planet. So why is Mars red? Because it's angry, um, because the iron on the surface was exposed to oxygen or because liquid heated up or because um, there was a fire on the planet. So this is kind of the way that um, we, I devised you know, these questions was really to <laughs> explore you know, sort of scientific misconceptions. A lot of the things that come out within contemporary society are about uh, misconceptions and students will be faced with a lot of fake news um, as we are at right now. So it's really about um, trying to find out and discover what is true, what is false, you know, what is ridiculous, you know, and why is it ridiculous? 
And um, so we took some photos um, from the Mars rover mission, which is now happening. So uh, we wanted to make that relevant for them. And um, really to have a look about what um, they saw, um, you know, what is the white stuff on, on Mars and, you know, to discuss that and to have a dialogue with the teachers about that. <clears throat> So yeah, so um, then it's also looking at facts, the facts about Mars, um, and to really explore what those facts are. And, um, you know, actually to think about the Mars rover and um, what is it about the pol polar caps? You know, we have a polar cap on the planet Earth, so perhaps they can compare it with the planet Earth. So there's a little bit of comparison going on there. Um, and are there any mountains on Mars? Do you think that uh, we could live here in the future. So imagining themselves within that context. Um, so, you know, that's something that certainly, you know, sparks their curiosity and helps them to think about or imagine themselves within that context. Um, so wonderings about Mars is really uh, to watch the video, but then um, answer the questions um, that are here and to think about what did you learn about Mars in the video? What is surprising? Um, so really to kind of think about the properties there and go into that. <clears throat> so again, we go back to the context. So it's really about focusing in on one planet and then bringing it out to the context, larger context, and then having a look at Ju Jupiter and seeing what place does Jupiter have in the solar system. And then also looking at the specificities of Jupiter. So particularly um, Jupiter has many storms, uh, Jupiter has a huge red spot. Um, and to really talk about what are those storms? Why are those storms there? Is it because Jupiter is a gassy planet? You know, what, what makes it a gassy planet? So really kind of get into the details of the properties of the planets, which is a learning objective uh, for year five. And um, obviously now um, this is quite a fun video. I'll just play a little bit of it. My name is Jupiter, the biggest planet you see. No planet in our solar system that's bigger than me. My name is Jupiter, a windy planet I be. And I have 62 moons that rotate around me so free. The Romans gave me my name after their king of the gods because my size is so massive in the sky. So the thing about this video is that it really encourages that kind of fun aspect. You know, when you have a song, then it's really about, um, you, you know, songs help children to remember. It's been a lot, there's been a lot of research about the way in which children remember through tunes, through rhythms, through sounds. So that's really an engaging aspect. And then from that, then um, it's really about um, how many moons does it have? Um, you know, what kind of giant is it? How many days um, are only hours long? So it asks the students not only to have fun with the song, but also to remember the facts that the song is teaching them. Uh, so yeah, that's that. And then, so Saturn, going on to Saturn, then, um, you know, obviously Saturn is a little bit more mysterious with its with its rings um so that's the first thing obviously that you recognize about saturn most people recognize um so you know talk about that and why is it that it has rings it kind of sparks their curiosity again so exploring saturn saturn so saturn spins on its axis and rotates just as our planet it spins on earth axis and it goes into the details about that it's like um that it takes Saturn to spin around one time is only 10.7 Earth hours. That means that a day on Saturn is just a little more than 10 hours long. So it's this comparison between Earth and Saturn, which really helps the students to think about their own context, but also the context out there, um, which, you know, also helps with, you know, thinking beyond what their physical environment is. Um, yeah, so also that it's a gas planet so that they can compare it to the other gassy planets like Jupiter. And, um, and also then just a bit of reflection about what, how long a day is on Saturn so that they can reproduce that knowledge themselves. 
So also about the historical context, um, so that it wasn't until 1610 that anyone saw Saturn's rings. So that's talking about Galileo, you know, so of course thinking about the historical precedents of scientists and what's important and how he discovered that and how important telescopes are. But then also how it was the Dutch astronomer who um, really looked at the Saturn ring. Um, and then, you know, obviously um, when in 2004, then there was more uh, data that we could gather where we could understand the planet further um, and understand the moons around Saturn. Uh, Saturn. So you can also talk about the moons that are around other planets as well. And, you know, look at the Hubble um, spacecraft um, satellite and really um, see some of the amazing images. So in addition to that, then um, it's really a bit more about Saturn and then um, really thinking scientifically now, how many um, Earths would it take to equal the mass of Saturn? So that goes into, okay, you've got to think a little bit more um, and you've got to think about, okay, what's, what's the um, Earth's mass and um, you know, how does that relate to the mass of Saturn? So, uh, and actually the, the answer is in the text. So it's also about reading the text um, with uh, enthusiasm and trying to identify and then extract that and put that in the answer. So it's not too difficult, but it's difficult enough for students to recognize that they need to pay close attention to detail and really find that uh, information and then think about it and then present it. So just upon reflection, what is um, what do you know about Saturn already? What questions do you have about Saturn? So this is a bit more of a free exercise. It's reflecting. Um, what about the rings? What are they made of? Um, and also a bit about what they see in this picture. So what are the moons that are there with Saturn? And um, really think a bit more about the um, what it looks like in the solar system close up and um, how that relates to other planets with their moons and how it's different. So some, some comparison and some observation and also reflection as well. So obviously it's really important to know about um, the moon. Um, it's so close to us and looking at the difference between um, the Earth and the Moon and what's the distance from the Earth to the Moon. And for that, then we have like a STEM works. We are um, unable to see the sun at night. However, we often see the Moon in the dark. Did you realize the shape of the Moon changes at different times? Why do you think the shape of the Moon changes? So, there it's like really asking questions about you know what happens uh to the shape of the moon is it that it changes or is it just that we can't see it and why can't we see it um so you know they can observe it in the night sky the teachers can encourage them to look through telescopes if they had telescopes if not then they can just you know do it with their naked eye and you know and then come back and talk about it within class So another important learning objective is also to think about the moon's rotation. And um, this learning objective is, is particularly embedded within um, SEMWORKS, so we can quickly have a look Just at like the, the Earth moon's rotation. rotation. on its own axis, the moon also rotates on its own axis as it revolves around the Earth. Let's observe the orbit of the moon around Earth. This is a simple simulation of the moon's orbit around the Earth. The pin on the surface of the moon helps to show the rotation of the moon about its own axis. By studying the simulation, what do you notice about the rotation of the moon and its orbit around the Earth? So you can see that there are different options that the student can take. Um, and it's really important to kind of experiment with that and ask them questions. Um, so, yeah, um, there's also the phases of the moon, which is important because um, obviously we 
see that the shadows cast on the moon goes through a different cycle. Um, so that goes into a lot of detail and we've encouraged students to have a learning log, which is like a, a mission log book. Um, so you can see that this You're is- You're unable to see the sun at night. However, we often see the moon in the dark. Did you realize the shape of the moon changes at different times? Why do you think the shape of the moon changes? How does this happen? In reality, the actual shape of the moon does not change. However, as the moon orbits the earth, different parts of the moon are lit by the sun. This is because the moon is at a different position relative to the sun and the earth. The moon does not produce any light of its own either. The light we see coming from the moon is actually light reflected from the sun. The actual shape of the moon does not change. Instead, the shape of the moon that we see from the earth depends on how much of the lighted part of the moon is facing the earth. Let's explore how this works. The earth is about four times bigger than the moon. It is about the size difference you see here. However, it is not drawn to scale. In fact, the distance between the Earth and Moon is about 384,400 kilometers. As the Moon revolves around the Earth, its shape appears to change in a repeated pattern. This is called the lunar cycle. The lunar cycle is made up of eight main phases. The part of the Moon that is lit by the Sun is facing away from the Earth. I can't see anything. This is called the new moon. A small portion of the part of the moon that is lit by the sun is facing the earth. I can see a crescent shaped moon. Half of the part of the moon that is lit by the sun is facing the earth. I can see half of the moon. Most of the part of the moon that is lit by the sun is facing the earth. I can see almost three quarters of the moon. The entire part of the moon that is lit by the sun is facing the earth. It is a full moon. Most of the part of the moon that is lit by the sun is facing the earth. I can see almost three quarters of the moon. It looks similar to phase four, except that the lighted part is on the opposite side. Only half of the part of the moon that is lit by the sun is facing the earth. I can see half of the moon. Okay, and so it goes on. So I just wanted to give you a full um, overview of how that works because it's really great to actually give the students that time where they can spend uh, thinking about, you know, this complex topic, because it is quite complex. Um, so <clears throat> being able to understand it fully is important. We don't only want to, you know, keep the students on their toes by asking questions and getting them to um, quickly do um, responses, but also to take some time to really observe and think about things that you can see in the sky and why is that, why is it happening? Um, so yeah, that's why I took a little bit longer on that one. Um, and, you know, obviously this is a bit more of an exploratory activity. We want students to think deeply about it, um, you know, to write about it in their logbook, to to spend some time, it's like a, a longevity study. So they can take as long as the phases of the moon take and watch that um, and then report back to their class, you know. So it's a little bit more than just like a little tiny experiment that takes two minutes or 10 minutes and it's done. It's more like, okay, let's look at the month um, of, of the moon cycle and, um, and, and really understand and how, you know, what humans, what happens to humans during that month, you know, so, um, and, I think really thinking about 
um, the different circumstances and the different experiments of short term experiments, uh, which are very easy to study. Um, and maybe you can get results very quickly, but also these longevity studies where you have to spend some time and you have to think about it, you have to record and um, you have to reflect is really important at this stage as well. So yeah, so this is um, an activity um, which they can do at home or in the classroom. Um, and it looks at what is a new moon and how to repeat that within, um, within the class itself and how you can uh, use something like a polystyrene ball, um, you know, or um, you can create, you can explore how to make things like, uh, and, you know, we give instructions there. Um, if they don't have a styrofoam ball, then you can use something like um, foam, perhaps, um, or one of those footballs, you know, that you can cut a hole in so you can stick the, the pole in. So really have fun with uh, taking your own time to create your, that experiment. Um, and then also um, to watch how um, you do it within 30 minutes and how that's like the comparison of 30 days. Uh, so that's a really fun activity that we wanted uh, students to explore, um, which fits in with learning objectives. And it just goes on to look at the first quarter moon, waning gibbous moon. So we've actually given them, you know, the proper titles um, and last quarter moon and the new moon. So yeah, and that's it. So that gives you an idea of um, how we mapped the, uh, the topic of earth and, and space and the solar system, as well as the moon. Uh, to the UK curriculum and obviously you can go off and um, explore more um, about this in your own environment and at home um, so it's a really it's a combination of controlled exercise um, scientific ex experiment in the short term but also longevity studies um, and also just you know practical experiments so you don't always have to be looking at the screen okay so thanks for listening and I'll see you next time <laughs>